Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau and in today's video I would like to show how you can use caching and memoization to improve the performance of your code, so to speed things up. Now, uh, what is caching? The form of caching that you, you're probably most familiar with is the caching that a web browser does. Uh, so if you load a page in a web browser, of course that page needs to first be downloaded from the internet and that can take a little while, of course, right? Page loading can take a while. But then what your browser will do is actually save the page and all the, all the things that belong to the page, like the style sheet, etc., in a cache, so on your own computer. And the next time that you load that page, all or some parts of that cache are actually reused again, so that you don't have to download the entire page and all the things that belong with it again. Right? So it saves you some loading time. So caching is a form of storing intermediate results that either have been calculated by a function or that have been downloaded from the internet so that you don't have to download them again or calculate them again, etc. That is caching. Now, in the form of computer programming or in the context of computer programming, we often use a form of caching that is called memoization. And memoization is a uh, caching of function calls. So imagine that you have the function uh, square root and you, add, you call it twice to get the square root of nine. Then if you don't do any caching, if you don't do any memoization, it will calc the computer will calculate the square root of nine two times and give you the result two times, right? Three is the square root of nine. Um, so the calculation is done twice, which is in principle unnecessary. So if you apply memoization to the square root, what will happen instead is the first time that you call the get the square root of nine, it is actually calculated, but then the result is stored in some kind of caching table and the next time that you call the square root of nine, it is not calculated again, but rather the result is looked up in this caching table and returned right away. And you can imagine that for a function that takes actually a little bit, a little while to calculate, um, that can massively improve the performance of the code because looking up the result in a caching table is much faster, generally speaking, than determining the result again. In the case of square root, the call, the function call is very cheap, doesn't take a lot of time, so memoization will not speed things up not much at least, but for some functions that take a lot of time to complete, it does actually speed things up a lot. Now, to illustrate memoization, I made an, uh, made an example of two functions. They're quite technical, and at the end of the video, I will explain how they are implemented for those of you who are interested. But for now, let's focus on conceptually how these functions work and how we can improve them with memoization uh, so that we don't get distracted by the implementation details. So the first function is called decompose. And decompose works such that for any number x, it returns a list of prime numbers that when multiplied with each other, give you x. Uh, so the decomposition of x. So decompose 12 will give you two, two and three because two times two is four times three is 12. Uh, decompose five will only give you a list of five uh, because five cannot be decomposed, right? It's already prime. Uh, decompose 9 will give you a list of 3 and 3 because 3 is a prime number and 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, that's how decompose works. Uh, then we have another function, random prime. And random prime takes two arguments, min x and max x. And what it does is in this range, between the range of min x and max x, it will find a, a random number that is prime, right? Assuming that within that range there are prime numbers. So it will randomly select a prime number within that range. Now, importantly, uh, random prime uses decompose to determine whether something is prime. How? Well, it uses it relies on the property that the decomposition of a prime number is a list of only one element, that namely the number itself. Why? Well, the decomposition of three is the list with only three. The decomposition of five is the list with only five, right? Whereas non-prime numbers like eight, for example, will be decomposed in a list of multiple numbers. So you can use that to determine whether something is prime or not. Okay, now we understand the functions. And at the end of this video, I will explain their implementation for those of you who are still uh, awake and, uh, and interested. Okay. Let's execute this. So I will run this file and then it will be loaded into this IPython console here on the right hand side. So for those of you who don't know that, an IPython console is an interactive Python interpreter with a few bells and whistles that makes it very nice for these kinds of uh, demonstrations. Okay, um, let's first just call decompose, let's say 34. Decompose 34 returns two and 17 because two and 17 are prime and two times 17 is 34. If I call it again, it will return two and 17 uh, again. 
Now, why, why do I call it twice? Well, to illustrate the point, the important point for our purpose, that decompose is deterministic, or as some people say, uh, referentially transparent. For any value of x, for any argument, it will always give you the same return value. And that's important for memoization. Um, now let's see how random prime works. Random prime. Let's give a range, 9,900, 10,000. I think that's a nice range. Okay, it gives us a prime number. And I calculate it again. It gives us a prime number, but a different one. Within that range, but a different one. Again, I, calc I, I call it twice to illustrate the important point that random prime is not deterministic. For any given set of arguments, for any range, it is allowed to give a different return value. And for the purpose of memoization, that is important. Um, but before we get to the memoization, let's first take a look at the performance of our program, because this is all about performance. So I'm going to use the magic command, as they call it in IPython, time it, which allows you to execute a particular line of code multiple times um, and see how long it takes. So I'm going to do a thousand loops of only one repetition. That's what this means. And then I'm going to do random prime with the same range as before. Up, and see how long it takes. All right, um, so it took on average 1.9 milliseconds, almost two milliseconds. Now, um, in the context of a, a human life, two milliseconds is not that much. But in the context of a computer program, it is quite a lot because two milliseconds tend to add up. If every function call that you have takes two milliseconds, you may end up with a very, uh, very slow program. So it makes sense actually to see if we can get those two milliseconds significantly down. And we're going to do that with memoization. Now, what are we going to, which function are we going to memoize? The first candidate would be random prime. But as I said, uh, random prime is not deterministic. For any given range of values, it can return something different. And this means that we cannot re save the return value because it can be different every time. So if we would apply memoization to random prime, um, it would speed it up for sure, but it would also change the behavior of the function because it would start behaving such that for the same uh, arguments, the same range of values, it would always return the same, um, the same prime number, right? So it would not be random anymore. Important bottom line, only apply memoization to functions that are deterministic, that are referentially transparent, uh, not random prime. Do we have such a function? Yes, we do. Um, decompose is perfectly deterministic. For any given value of x, the return value is always the same. Decompose 34 is always 2,17. Decompose 12 is always 2,2,3. Um, so this means that if we apply memoization, it will not change the behavior of the function because we can safely store the return value of decompose and reuse it. Another property of decompose that makes it very suitable for memoization is the fact that um, uh, that it takes a little while. It is an expensive function, especially for big numbers, large numbers. It takes a while to determine the decomposition. And therefore, it starts to make sense to actually store the return values um, so that we don't have to calculate uh, these, this expensive return value multiple times. Um, so expensive functions are better for memoization than cheap functions. If a function takes a long time, it's better to memoize it than when it takes only a short time. A third property of decompose that makes it suitable for memoization is that we tend to call it many, 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 many times with the same argument. So imagine a function that you call only once with a particular argument. For that function, there is no point in memoization because there is no point in storing the result of the function call if you're not going to use it again later. But in the case of decompose, it will be due to the way that it is structured and that I will explain later, be called very often with the same argument, right? For example, decompose two and decompose three and five, etc., will be called very, very often. Um, and therefore it makes sense to not in, in many, many times determine that return value again, but rather to use memoization so that we have to determine things only once. So yes, decompose is deterministic one, Two, it is expensive. And three, it is called many times with the same arguments. And these three properties make it a perfect candidate for memoization. So how do we apply memoization? Um, we can do that in many ways, but there is a very nice uh, decorator in the functools module of Python, import functools SFT, uh, SFT. And it's called LRU, gosh. So, oops. 
max size is none. All right, let me explain what this means. So this decorator, this add uh, syntax, if you're not familiar with it, means that we're applying a decorator to a function. I actually have a few videos on decorators if you're interested in that. So if you want to know how they work and you don't, take a look at those videos. But for now, I will just say that a decorator takes a function, in this case decompose, and sort of wraps around it, encapsulates it, and changes its behavior a little bit. In this case, it changes the behavior of decompose such that the first time that it is called with a given value of x, decompose is executed, but then the result is stored in a caching table. And the next time that we call decompose with the same value for x, decompose is actually bypassed, and the result, the return value, is looked up in the caching table. It is, in other words, memoization. Then it takes a argument, max size, and max size specifies how many how uh, many return values can be stored. I set it to none, meaning that we there is no size limit. We return we say store as many return values as possible. Um, in some cases, if you if if for example the return values are big or if you, if you don't think that it makes a lot of sense to store very old return values, then you can specify some kind of limit. Say, for example, if you have a web server where you're caching uh, pages that have been loaded from the internet, you probably don't want to cache very, very old pages. So you're only caching the, the latest few pages. And then you can specify a max size argument here. Uh, the LRU stands for least recently used. Um, which to me is a bit strange because what it's actually caching is the most recently, the most recent return value, right? So if you specify here, say five, then the la last five calls to decompose will actually be cached and the older ones will be thrown away. That's what it means. But we're going to cache everything. Okay. So I'm going to execute this to load everything into the, into the, the IPython console, my workspace here. And first, let's verify that we have not changed any of the behavior. So if I say decompose 34, up, it's still 2 and 17. If I do it again, it's still 2 and 17. If I say random prime in that range that I used before, up, 9941. If I do it again, 9929, right? So it's still perfectly fine. So the behavior hasn't changed and that's what we want. But let's now take a look at the performance. So time it. A thousand loops of only one repetition. That's what this means. Random prime 99900. Up. Okay. Up. Bomb. 135 microseconds per loop. Um, what is a microsecond? A microsecond is a thousandth of a millisecond. So we went from almost two milliseconds to 0.1 milliseconds. So a speed up of say 15 to 20 times. So we have sub substantially sped up our code through memoization. Um, and this is a very, you will find this kind of behavior, this kind of performance improvements quite often in situations that have the characteristics that I just described. If you have a function that is deterministic, expensive, and is called very often with the same arguments. Then um, memoization or caching can dramatically improve the performance of your code. And actually the 20-fold 20, the 20 increase that we see here is not even that much. It can be much, much better in some cases. Okay, so I hope you understand the basic principles of memoization now uh, and how you can apply that to your own code. Um, and then as promised, let's take a look at how these functions actually work. You're, you're excused if you wanna zone out now. So how does decompose work? Um, the first thing that we're going to do, so we're switching away from memoization and going to the implementation. So the first thing that we're going to do is check whether X is actually an integer, because we can only decompose integers and not floating point numbers, and whether it is at least uh, two. So for uh, integer no things that are not integer numbers or values that are one or less, we actually raise a value error because they are not val valid input for decomposition. This is a form that you could call this defensive programming uh, because we're actually validating the input of the function before the function actually crashes. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to loop, uh, we're going to loop through the range two to x. Uh, so y will, will, will increase from two to x. And then we're going to see if x is divisible by y. If it is divisible y, by y, so if the modulo of x, mo, x modulo y is actually zero, then that means that x can be divided by y. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to call decompose again 
with y. So we're going to decompose the, 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 the divider uh, itself. And we're going to decompose x divided by the divider. So those will give us two new number, two new lists of decomposed numbers. And we're going to concatenate them. And together they make up the decomposition of x. So you see, this is actually a function that calls itself, right? Decompose is one of these functions that calls itself, which is very elegant. Now, if we've looped through this entire range of numbers and we have not found any i that actually can divide x, that means that x is a, is a prime number. And it means that we cannot decompose x and then we fall back to returning the list of only x. So that's how decompose works. De decompose works. Um, it's interesting. It took me a while actually to, to come up with a, uh, uh, parsimonious implementation of this, this function, but I think I, this is, this is okay. So how does random prime work? Um, so random prime takes a range, then it creates a range of that range, <laughs> but a range is a special object in Python. So if we want to turn it into a list that we can shuffle, we have to explicitly cast it to a list with the list function. Then we shuffle that list of numbers. So that we don't, and that's where our random element comes in, right? We get a random list of numbers in that range. Then we loop through that list of numbers. For every x in that list, uh, we check the decomposition. If the de length of the decomposition is one, meaning that the number is decomposed into itself, meaning that it is prime, we return that x. If we've looped through all the numbers and we've not found any prime, uh, then we say, well, the range does not contain any prime numbers and we crash. So that's how random prime works. Okay, now, uh, that was so, so far for the implementation details. I hope you learned a little bit. I hope you understand when uh, memoization and caching can speed up your code and when it cannot or when it should not. Um, and uh, happy coding. Thank you for your attention.